Um, watch how clever I am now. All right, that way people at home don't have to sit adjusting their volume and so on. So, <laughs> All right, um, I'm going to continue anyhow, though. Uh, I apologize to the people watching the video, but then again, I, I guess it doesn't do me any good to apologize to them because they can't hear it anyhow. All right, so the point is, is we can start making it more personal. We can start adding images, and we can start uh, changing the font, adding colors, but the important thing is, is before we get into that, I want to make sure you really understand the stuff that we've done so far. All right, because if you're still struggling with that, if you still have some questions about that, then it's going to be difficult for you to go on to that next phase. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download the example that we had on Thursday, take a look at it, and see what questions you have. And if you don't have questions, then we'll go in and we'll start enhancing the page through the use of images and CSS. So let me pull down the page from Canvas. Okay, I am not connected to the internet, so I am just going to go home and watch some TV. All right, I suggest, no, uh, of course we're not going to do that. All right, what I'm going to do again is I'm going to build a new page. I guess that's just as well. All right, so let's go in and let's create a brand new web page. I guess it's probably good to start, if we're reviewing, it's probably good to start from the ground up anyhow. So I'm going to go into Notepad. All right. First of all, there are the tags that are on every page. What are the tags and stuff that are on every single page? Yes. The doc type is the first thing. All right. So, whoops. This, strictly speaking, isn't a tag, it's a doc type declaration, but it's one of those things that appears on every single page. What's something else that appears on every single page? The head and title, all right? Is the head and title inside of something? The HTML tag, right. So, HTML tag wraps around the entire page. Then we have the head and title. Now I've noticed, and I think I even posted an announcement, that some people um, are not um, real careful about setting up uh, their tags as far as like they'll have them not lined up, something like that. All right. Remember, the browser will understand it. The reason that we line up the tags is to make sure that Thank you. it's easy for us to read. All right. So therefore, if you do something like this, it'll work, all right? but it's going to be very difficult for you to see where the tag begins and ends and you're liable to take more time. You want to do things, almost everything that you do in web development that I say it's a good idea to do this or it's a good practice to do this, is to make it easier to go back and change it. Because what web page out there doesn't change from time to time? All right, it's very rare. So anyhow, we have a head and we have a title.
and it's Groundhog's Day. So we'll do a page about Groundhog's Day. Now one thing, again remember, within the title you cannot put other tags. All right. So you could not put like a link within the title or an H1 or something like that. The title is just plain text. All right, there's another main section of the page that's on every page, and that is the body. These are sort of the tags that are on every single page. All right, these are the tags that are on every single page. Notice again, the indenting I already talked about. The nesting, again, nesting tags come in pairs, remember. There's a start tag and an end tag. And tags are nested. That is, a tag that starts within a tag ends within the tag. So the title tag starts within the head, so the end title tag also needs to be within the head. You wouldn't have it like this. where the title tag starts in the head, but the title tag is after the head. And all these tags do is they tell the browser what those particular words mean, what that particular content means. In other words, Groundhog's Day is the title of the page, which means it's going to display up in the title bar, like up here. And if we minimize it, we'll be able to see that um, in the window. All right. We talked about the body being subdivided into some main sections. And these, we, these are tags that are new to HTML5 and they're very valuable. What were some of the sections that we talked about as being part of the body? Article. Article. Header. Header. Footer. Footer. Uh, is it a side? A side. Yeah. Nav. I think that's all of them but one. And the one is section, right. Um, some of these are pretty obvious. Some of them are less obvious. Um, the header is meant to be something that appears on the very top of the page. And that should tell you, like, what the page is about. That should identify the page. If it's for an organization, it should make it clear who the page is for. You should never have to look at a web page and guess. Gee, who made this page? You know, is this Lorain County Community College's page, or is this Cuyahoga Community College's page, or what? All right. So the header usually defines that stuff. And within the header, you can have any other tags. Typically, you're going to have heading tags. So I could say Mike's. page about Groundhog Day. And I could put other stuff in there as well. I then can have articles. And I'm going to go and, and copy and paste stuff from Wikipedia. Oh, no, no, I'm not. Um, I'm going to make two articles on this page. Groundhog Day is a silly holiday the superstition is on February 2nd if the groundhog sees 
its shadow, there are six more weeks of winter. If not, early spring. And again, if this were an actual web page, I'd go on to question the legitimacy of taking meteorological advice from rodents and so on, but we can leave it like that because it's no fun watching me type. Then I can make another article about the movie. Groundhog's Groundhog Day was a movie starring Bill Murray. Now notice again, it doesn't matter where I put or how I divide my paragraphs. In other words, in this case, I put my paragraphs and I put a return at the end of each line. All right? I could have typed it out all on one line if I want to. Again, the key is readability. All right? I forgot my end article tag. It's a good idea if you make a start article tag or any start tag to put in the ending tag immediately. And then I can have a footer section on the bottom. That is sort of important information, but it is of secondary importance. Something that you don't necessarily want to put up, something that you want to put on the page, but you don't necessarily want it like up in people's faces. You know, sometimes people joke about like the fine print uh, of a document, you know. So I can put on the, on the uh, page something like, Mike Zeller's copyright 2016. So I go to save it. I'm going to go to the desktop. I am going to change it from text file to all files. And then I'm going to give it a name. I'll just call it gh.html. And I'll save it. Now I can view it within the browser simply by double clicking it and there's the page. Now notice that here's the title up here, here's my header, my two articles, and my footer. How does the browser know to make this the biggest? Well because I identify that text as a top level heading. By identifying it as a top level heading, that is saying this is sort of the most important heading on the page. This is one of the most important headings on the page and therefore it makes it bigger. Because as a general rule, stuff that's in bigger, bigger letters is meant to be more important. You know, turn around and look at, there's a poster in the back of the room that says, is there a doctor in the house? Even I can read that from here, right? That's the part that's meant to get your attention. All right, some of the other stuff is important, but it's of lesser importance. They want to get your attention first. All right, the last thing we're going to add to this is I'm going to add a navigation. And again, everything's on the same page, so you might wonder how you can have a navigation. Well, remember, you can navigate to different sections of the page by creating links to an ID. So I'm going to go here. And I'm going to create my nav section. Links are really simply an unordered list. It's unordered because I could have put them in the other order. Right? I could have put the movie on top and then had about the, um, had about the, the holiday underneath it. Right? There's nothing. I mean, it would depend on the purpose of my website. You know, it's not like I was ranking the top 
so many movies of whatever year and therefore it needs to be in a certain sequence. So, I can go A, href equals, and I can do pound sign meaning. Now when I do a pound sign like that, it means find the I thing on the page that has an ID of meaning. And I'm going to put the ID of meaning right here. By the way, I made a mistake. What mistake did I make? No, that shouldn't be capitalized because it needs to match the ID. Oh, okay. All right, and it's not capitalized in the ID, so it's not going to be capitalized here. Oh, you didn't give a list item. I didn't give a list item. Right. So it should be a list item, right? Lists are composed of list items. And then I can put a nice thing of movie here. Now what do I need to know to make the movie link work? What do I need to do, rather, to make the movie link work? I have to make an ID of movie. All right. So. So now I save it, I hit refresh, and if I click on movie, this isn't a very long page so I got to do that. I click on movie, it jumps to the movie part. I click on meaning, it jumps to that. So I've made a little navigation within the page. And we looked at the different kinds of links last time, right? We looked at a link to someone else's page where you put the full address, http colon slash slash www.google.com for each thing, for each link. Or we looked at making a link to another one of our own pages. And assuming it's in the same folder, we simply put in the name of the file. But it has to be the precise name of the file. All right? Um, which it could be a .htm or it could be a .html. All right, so you need to do that. Now, with that in mind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and turn on so that I can see the file extensions because that's important. So now when I look at the file, I can see the full name of this file is gh.html. So if I was going to do a page about different holidays or different superstitions or whatever. I could link to it if I said href equals gh.html, provided that all the pages were in the same folder. Question on any of this. This sort of takes you up to speed with where we've been to so far. So if you have a pretty good grip on this, you're in good shape. Notice what I'm doing is that I have the file open in Notepad and I also have it open in a browser window somewhere there. So I go between making a change to it and then hitting refresh in my browser. All right. Only one file. A lot of times, and again, I still even get this, um, I've, I've gotten, gotten this this semester where people say I have the .txt file and I have the HTML file. You only need one file. Save it as a .html by going into changing file from text file to all files and save it .html. And then you have that. To open it back up again, you go into Notepad again and file open and you do the same thing. Change from text documents to all files and then you can see the file and open it and you're good to go. 
<clears throat> I don't like to get too far into the class before I talk, start talking about CSS. Because one thing that happens in this class is, especially people that are understanding material, they look at it and they say, what if I want to center the content, for example? Don't have everything pushed over to the left, but center it. Or what if I don't like black text on a white background? What if I want a different color? Or things like that. All right. I think it's important to consider HTML and CSS kind of at the same time. You know, we have a couple of weeks head start on HTML, but now we're going to pick up CSS because the two work together. They each provide something different to a web page. HTML gives you the content of the web page, gives you the words, gives you the later on it will give you the images, gives you the links, gives you the lists, and so on. It also gives you how the page is organized. In other words, in this page we've identified the different main sections of the page. The header, the nav, the article, and the footer. All right. Now, there's some variation on how you could do this. For example, you could have used, I could have used a section instead of article, and I don't think anyone would complain. I could have made the main article about the holiday of Groundhog's Day and simply have the article about the movie as sort of an aside. All right? But I made them both articles. All right? That's one of those decisions that you really shouldn't like agonize about. Whatever seems to make sense to you is probably a good idea. All right. Now, now that we have all these different tags, we can start changing the appearance of the page. And why is it a good idea to change the appearance of the page? What's wrong with the page like this? Oops. What's wrong with all of our pages looking like that? It's boring. All right. And that's true. All right. You could print a brochure on a sheet of paper and just have words on it. But when people prepare brochures, if you look out, you know, look out when you go past the bulletin boards, when people make brochures, they put pictures on it, they put color. Why? To catch your eye, to make it more interesting, to make it look better. All right. It's easier to look at things that look good than things that aren't particularly terribly interesting. All right? But in a way, it's more important than that. What we can do for the user is help organize the page into sections. There's some distinct sections here. There's a header, there's a navigation, there's a couple of articles, and there's a footer. We can help the user more easily read the page and scan through the page by giving them sort of visual ideas of like where the different sections are. I don't have, can I borrow your book real quick? So let's just open up a book to any page. Here's a good one. Here's a page, and again, we don't have to read in details, but it's titled, Why Semantics Matter. There's a headline on top, accessibility, search engine optimization, easier code maintenance and styling with CSS. These are three reasons why it's important to use the right HTML tags. Three real good reasons. Why it's important to use the head, uh, header and footer and article and nav and so on. This could just be a block of text. But they've divided it into sections and you can tell. This is a section. This is a section. And this is a section. That makes it easier if you're just scanning through the book to find a part. Maybe you wanted to read about search engine optimization. If this was simply a page of words all the way through, you'd have to read through all of it until you found the section that you were interested in. What they've done here through their layout 
it sort of break things up for you and help organize that for you. Let's look for another example. These tips. These tips could be simply paragraphs, but they've given a little symbol here indicating it's a tip, which is like a little snippet of advice. And the way they set it off sort of draws your attention to it and lets you know immediately what that is. So you don't have to read every single word. They have done some work to organize it for you. So when we talk about making, putting colors and different fonts and so on on web pages, it's not just to make it look better. It's to make it easier for people to use and read and scan through and so on. So just like authors of a book or publishers of a book maybe shade certain things, put borders around things, and so on, we're going to do that to the different sections of our web pages. That way our users can instantly see where the navigation is because we're going to make it stand out. All right? And so on. All right, the language to change the way the page looks is not HTML. Now, back in the old days, there's a very brief history lesson. I'll try not to be too boring. But back in the old days, CSS was just sort of being developed, and web designers still wanted their pages to have a little bit of color and styling to them. So in the old days, there were things that you could do right in HTML to change the way the page looks. All right? We are going to do none of those All right, because they've all been replaced with CSS. CSS is a better way to do it. All right? For example, in the old days, you could put on the body tag, you could say what the color of the page was. Just right within the body tag, you could define the color of the page. You could put break tags in your paragraphs to make a paragraph not go all the way across the screen but to go only halfway across the screen. Those kinds of things lead to many issues. Number one, it makes it harder to change a page. Specifically, it makes it harder to change an entire site. What we're going to learn how to do is to put our CSS code in a separate file. So we're going to control all the pages of our site through one file. So that if we want to make every one of our 100 pages on our site green, we can do that by simply changing one CSS file instead of having to go and change 100 HTML files. Also, things like the break tag, that might work if your browser window is a certain size, but if you had a smaller browser window, or if you're viewing it on a mobile phone, or something like that, it's not going to look very good. It's really challenging for web developers because web developers have to make pages that look good not just on desktop machines with giant monitors, but laptops that might have a smaller monitor, and maybe even mobile devices such as mobile phones that have a much, much smaller screen. So the way that we can do that is have our content in one file and have the way that it appears in a second file. Then we can swap out and say, hey, if you're on a mobile file, use this, or on a mobile device, use this file to make your page look the way that you want it to. If you're on a desktop, use this file. All right? So you can have a website that works not just on a de desktop, but also on a mobile device. So the start of doing that is putting in nothing that has to do with appearance in the HTML itself, in HTML code. You just put what they call in the textbook the semantic stuff, the stuff that deals with meaning. In other words, this is a navigation section. This is what this unordered list means. This is an article. This is an article. When you do that, then you have the best opportunity to, to be flexible in the way that you make it look. So, about CSS. Eventually, we're going to make our own file for CSS. But today, we're going to put the style in the same file as the HTML. So there is a style tag.
The style tag tells the browser everything between here and here is not HTML. We're not in HTML land anymore. We're in CSS land. Therefore, interpret the stuff between here and here, not as HTML tags, but as CSS commands. All right? All CSS commands look the same. All right? Now keep in mind that for demonstration purposes, I'm going to make colors that really stand out. All right? Or I'm going to try to make colors that really stand out. Um, they might not be the best looking colors. All right? Later on, we'll figure out how to put together a good color scheme that looks good. But right now for demonstration, I'm just going to pick colors that are going to be very obvious, at least to most people. Is there anyone in the class that's colorblind? Okay. That is a consideration, and we'll talk a bit about that consideration later on in the course. So, CSS rules, and again, these are probably best described as rules and not commands or tags or anything like that. They work like this. The first part of it, the part that's outside of the curly braces, is called a selector. The selector selects what is going to get the rule. In other words, what thing on the page does this rule apply to? Now in this case, I've selected the body tag. Well, the body tag is what? It's the entire page. So this style rule is going to apply to the body tag. Therefore, it's going to apply to the entire page. All right? Within braces then, I have pairs attribute pairs. I have the name of an attribute and then I have the value of an attribute. Now I simply can't make up the name and values. These are a list of predefined attributes but one of the attributes is the background attribute. And then I have a colon and then I have a value. And then I end that attribute pair with a semicolon. So what do you think this is going to make the page look like? Pardon me? Yellow. It's going to make the background of the entire page yellow. Why the entire page? Because I've specified the body as a selector. And the body contains the whole page. The body is everything from here to here. So if I go and save that and hit refresh, there I go. And the entire page is now yellow. What do you suppose would happen if I said this? Header, background, yellow. How would that be different? Just the top part. Just the stuff within the header tag is going to be yellow. All right. So that's just that stuff. And so on down the line. All right. Now, I start with colors because that's usually, unless you're colorblind, that's usually the most obvious thing for you to see. All right. But this applies to almost every visual aspect of the page. And as the class goes on, we'll see more and more and more examples. If you want to change the font, there's a way to do it. If you want to change the color of the words, 
there's a way to do it. Here we're changing the background color. If you want to put more space between the letters, there's a way to do it. If you don't want the paragraph to go all the way across the page, but only halfway across the page, there's a way to do it. All right? So we're going to start out with colors because that's very simple and very straightforward. After we have the idea down, throughout the whole semester, we're going to add more and more things that you can control. So that you can take and make your page literally any way you want it to look simply by having the right selectors and attributes in your CSS file. All right? Now, what if I did this? Change that to a P. Which paragraph? All of them. All right? So anything that's in a paragraph tag is going to be yellow now. So that's within a paragraph tag, that's within a paragraph tag. All right. This is the simplest kind of selector I can have, where I simply give the value of an HTML tag as a selector, then every tag on that page gets this style rule. And again, what's a style rule? It's an attribute name and an attribute value. Now. I can change more than one value of an, uh, of a, of a, of an item. So let's say I want to have the background color yellow, but I want to have the text blue. I could do this. Color blue, semicolon. So again, the name of the attribute, a colon, the value for the attribute, a semicolon. Then I have the next pair of things. The name of the attribute, colon, the value of the attribute, semicolon. Some people prefer to do it this way. That way they can see all the attributes and values sort of line up. Or you can put, put it on one line. It's just like HTML code in that it lines up, you can line it up the way that you want to and, and the browser will understand it regardless. So now when I do this, all right, I think you can see that now the text is blue and the background is yellow. Now, What's going to happen if I do this? What if I give two style rules? That's what I did. I said the body has a blue background with yellow color. So Remember, color by itself means the color of the text. The paragraph, however, has a background of yellow and a color of blue. So, what's my page going to look like? Exactly. The, the whole page will be We'll have a background of blue and a color of yellow, except for the paragraphs, which will have a background of yellow and a color of blue. All right. Now, a couple things we'll come to in a second here, because notice our links kind of disappeared. They didn't actually disappear. They're actually sort of magenta on a blue background, and it makes them very difficult to see. Why did it do that? Why, in other words, the paragraph is part of the body, 
So why didn't it make the paragraphs blue and yellow? Well, how did it know to use this rule instead of this rule? Now which one showed up second? That's a good, good thought. Based on the tag. The more specific a rule is, that takes precedence over less specific. So in other words, Yes, this is in the body, but what's closer to this content is a paragraph tag. So sort of the closer one takes precedence, the more specific one takes precedence. So this gets the rule for a paragraph. This, the rest of the stuff gets the rule for the body. I could even make it more involved by doing something like this. And again, I'm, I'm using real ugly colors here, so we'll come back and clean these up uh, in, in a future class. But I could say an article, I want a background of red. And a color of white. All right, so let's see what that does. All right, well, the whole page is blue except for two things. Articles are red and white except for the paragraphs within the articles. Those are yellow with a blue background. Why is that? Well, the whole page is blue, but we've defined a specific rule for article. So that takes precedence over the rule for body. All right? And the rule for paragraph, because that's closer to this content than the article tag is, the rule for paragraph takes precedence over the rule for article. So, Therefore, we have the whole page is blue except for articles which are red and white. And those articles are red and white except for the paragraphs within them, which are yellow and blue. This is how the cascading sort of works. All right? One more little twist. What if I don't define an attribute for a particular style rule. In other words, I say article color white. I didn't specify the background color. What color is that article going to be? All right, white is a reasonable guess. It's not correct, but it's a reasonable guess. It's the same as the body. So if you don't define a style rule, for an element, it gets the style rule of the element that it's part of. So let's go through the browser's logic. The browser's logic looks, and again, it's not based on the sequence that it appears in. It's based on the nesting of the tags. It says, I'm going to make everything in the body blue background and yellow text. So imagine it went through and it painted that part of the page. And now it looks and says, OK, articles the text is going to be white and not yellow. So what color is the background for articles? It's blue, because it got the blue from the body rule. We've changed the color to white, however, but we haven't touched the background. Now paragraphs, on the other hand, are going to be yellow and blue, yellow background with blue text. So the whole page is blue with yellow text except for the articles. 
They have white text, and since we didn't define a background color, it gets the background color of the body, which is blue. The paragraphs get the background color um, and color from the paragraph tag, since that's the most specific rule. Now we could take this one step further and say, What if I do that? Well, the whole page is going to be blue with yellow font, except for the articles. They're going to have a background of blue. It gets that from the body. And a text color of white. So articles are going to have a blue background and a white color. What are paragraphs going to look like? Yellow and white. It's going to get the yellow from this rule. It's going to get the white from that rule. And yellow and white probably is not a good choice at all because <laughs> it's not readable. All right. And again, that is a consideration that you would need to use colors that um, would work. So we could do, for example, a background of red and Not saying it looks good, but at least it's readable. How can we make the links visible? First of all, why are the links magenta to begin with? That's a standard color. That's a browser default. Links are blue by default unless you've visited them. And if you visited them, then they become magenta. So how do you think we can change these links to be the color we want them to be? with the A tag, right? What are links? Links are A's. So I go in and say A, and I can say color um, what would be a good color to go against a blue background. Um, let's make gray. I don't know how that will look, but we'll see. A little bit better. Still not particularly good, but at least we can read them. Now, how does it set when you visit the link, what color will it be or will it not change color? It will not change color now because we've said we want all links, no matter what, to be gray. We can actually, we won't talk about it today, but we could actually make a different color for a link that we visited and a link that we haven't visited. So we'll, we'll cover that uh, in a future class. But right now, if I just say A, that means every single link, all the time, doesn't change color if you visited it. All right, what we will do next time. What we will do next time, first of all, is we'll work on getting a better color scheme for this. Because frankly, this isn't a good looking page. All right? But remember, this is just for examples. Now, the one comment that I hear a lot of people give is something to the effect of, well, I'm not artistic. That's fair. All right? That's a fair comment. But you don't have to be artistic to be able to pick a good color scheme because there's tools that help you pick what colors go with what. And we'll use those tools to help you come up with a good color scheme. And you should at least have some degree of sensibility to say, well, hey, this color, this color scheme works for this case. This color scheme doesn't work. All right, so you don't have to be an artist to do this. It's just a matter of using the tools available to come up with a scheme that's, first of all, readable, and secondly, attractive, and thirdly, and probably most importantly, helps the user organize a page, helps the user understand how the page is organized. Because that's the reasons that we use color and things like that. After we go over colors in more detail, we will look at some of the other things that we can change. We're not going to look at everything we can change, but we'll look at a few other things just to give you a taste of that and know that we're going to come over uh, more things uh, by the end of the semester. Then last but not least, we'll get into images uh, on, what would that be? Thursday, right? Today's Tuesday? Right. Thursday we'll go over images as well. Are there any questions at this point?
Yes. Yeah, I had a question about, well, I think it was a lecture from last week about what a side, a side is. Like, I know it has to do something with the article. Or right. Something. And it's, okay. But no, I just, I just got confused because I don't know. Yeah, an aside is like an additional piece of information related to the article. Okay. All right, so let's go, let's try to find, let's see if I have an internet connection. And I don't. Well, I don't feel bad that it's just picking on me then. Let's draw it. Let's say, let's say I was doing a page about the movie Groundhog's Day. Let's say I was doing a separate page. Groundhog's Day, the movie. So this would be in a header. I could maybe have an article about the plot. All right? All right. Maybe I would want additional information for people that were interested about one of the stars of the movie. It's not like critical. Mm -hmm. All right. You can read the whole article and read it and you would get the information about that. But it's like here's a little bit of extra information if you are interested. So maybe I would have an aside that would talk about Bill Murray and maybe give a little biography of Bill Murray. So it's like not part of the main article really, but it's related to like that. A little fun fact. Little fun fact, yeah. Or like if I was doing an article about the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. maybe I'd have an article about this, that, and the other, and then I'd have some background about the coaches. Or this player you know, had a slight knee injury, he may or may not play. Who's doing a halftime show, whoever it is, I don't even know. Uh, what time the puppy bowl is going to be on Animal Planet or whatever, right? Something that's like related to the main topic, but not like an important part of it. Okay. That would be an aside. Again, uh, a good thing to do, like look at a magazine. A lot of magazines have those. They'll have the main article and they'll have like, and they'll even put like in, a, in like a box or shaded differently or something to indicate, hey, here's a little bit additional information. Right. Fun fact is a great example of that. You'll okay. see in a lot of magazines. Other questions? All right, we'll see you up in lab. Does anyone have a thumb drive that I can use so that I can take this example? Because I, normally I upload it to Canvas, but I cannot do that, obviously, if we do not have internet. Thanks. And you're going to lab?